<laughs> Merry meet, witches. I'm Crow. Welcome to Witch in the Wild Side. Burr, it's cold. I wanted to continue uh, the conversation we were having on finding your deity, but I wanted to switch it over to connecting with deity. Um, I did think of a lot of different conversations we could have, but in the end, I thought it would be better if I just took you with me through a process that I use to honor the god, in this case, Kerninus, the horn god, um, where I go through the woods uh, over the course of a few days and I gather an incense, all in his honor. So I thought I would take you with me through that process. And we'll end up back at the altar and we'll put it all together and we'll honor the horn god. Okay, so let's get so started. I'm out here gathering some resin. Cold. we talking about. Um, this tree over here has some really interesting things going on it. And you can see all this white. That's that's resin that just dripped and dried. It gets this white pale look when you look up the tree resin here's it's just had a couple of days to dry you can see right you know here it's still really super clear and real wet and this is the drier stuff and you can see this little bits and pieces of it right in there it really changes as you get to it like this here like that's the actual stuff we're after you can see it's much like frankincense, except it comes from a fir tree. Here we are at the base of a hemlock. It's uh, it's harder to get resin from hemlocks. They don't seem to do it as as much. Don't seem to bleed as much. It's very sweet. It's very nice. I mean, they all are very similar. Uh, so I'm going to gather up this. It's very thin and it runs almost like water down into the ground here. I'll gather up a little bit from the ground as well. It'll have that earthy texture to it. When I leave here, I'm going to go to another fir tree where it's just, I mean, it's, it's bleeding down. It's, it's really nice. You're, it's got a, a little surprise in it, that one. Anyway, so I'm gonna gather up this and chip as much off and put it on my little bark so that I can... It's so sticky, I, it's gonna get everywhere. Anyways, see you in a bit. Well, witches, here we are at this tree, which is totally different. It's got so much coming out of it, but it's got everything from this crystal clear, drippy stuff. To this, wait till you get a load of this. I need my glasses. It's absolutely red. It's the most incredible yeah, stuff. It's a good drip. show you this as opposed to the, to the white. Right, look at that. Look how red that is. I don't know what it's about. Why it's like that or anything. But I'm going to call it God's blood and gather it all up. This is the gods talking. Very simple, you know, you go out into the woods and you, you go there with the intentions of connecting with Kernanos and you find the most bizarre things. <laughs> it's like when, you know, candles burn fast or slow or time slips by that shouldn't have. When you're working with magic, so many wild things happen. 
I always look at it like I don't do a lot of divination because I just watch for the signs. This is a sign. So I'll continue along and gather it up. <laughs> Blessed V, which is we'll see in a little bit. So you can see this rub here. That's from an elk coming along and rubbing the velvet off of their new horns. They dropped their old horn from last year and then they start growing their new ones and they come in with all this velvet on them and uh, they want it, they get itchy and they rub it all off with this. So what I do is I come along and I pick just some of these very fine little hairs like that and I add them what I add to the incense and I take it from these particular rubs because I know this is where the horn god's been so it's all it's all very beautiful <laughs> it's all very nice so I'm, I'm gonna get to it here and gather some up and put them in a little bag I got bust be look at this They've been really rubbing this one. Just rubbing the heck out of it, eh? <laughs> oh, the poor cedar trees. It's always the cedar. They always are rubbing the cedar. I, I, I guess it, it feels better. I don't know. I can't tell, but those are those. The pieces I'm after. You can see they're just all along it. You want the finest hairs you can find as possible. Like that's a little rough. That's going to be harsh in it. You want the finer stuff. But you can also, you know, I'll tear that up a bit when I get home. Make sure it's all just the finest stuff possible. So, that's what we're doing. I ho, witches! So you can see here the elks have been rubbing this too. Oh, I wanted to come here because of this stone. It's uh, it's one of my favorites on the property. It's uh, I call it the altar because it's so you know, big and flat. I come here, sit, and meditate on the on the moss. So uh, I want to talk about what we're actually doing here. The whole process of gathering this uh, offering for the horn god. It's very meditative. It takes place over quite a few days, three, four days, where I get up in the morning, the whole days, you know, I dedicate my time to this, and I wander off in a very, I try to be very slow, deliberate, and I just move through the woods and try to open myself up to the horn law. I, I call, I, 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 I reach out to him and call him and I just move through the forest and I, and I see what comes. It's kind of like when you're searing. It's that type of an energy where you're just open to seeing what's around you and just allowing yourself to be guided along the trail. And it, it, in doing that, in calling him like this and honoring him, I'm awaking that energy within me. I'm awakening the horn God who resides within my bone, within my flesh and my thought, so that we become one both in and without. It's, it's a very nice process. And of course, you know, I'm, as I, I'm gathering up the resins, uh, we've gotten hemlock and cedar, and white pine. I'm gonna go up and get some red pine. They're not bleeding, but I'll get some of the pine needles. Um, uh, I know the yew tree is you know, feminine, it's Hecate, but uh, I, I, 
I think I'm gonna put a little bit of that in. I don't think he will mind. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, and then there's juniper. I wanna get some juniper in there. Oh, juniper, it, 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 all on its own, it's an incredible thing to burn. It smells really good. So I'll just move through the woods with that in mind. And the process takes a few days to gather up the incense and and like I say I'm open to anything you know I found a feather yesterday and I, you pick that up and I'm saving that and I'm going to cut that into it and I mean it smells rank but that's kind of the horn god smell a lot of times right so um yeah I just I just allow myself to be open to his presence I I'm I'm in his realm, right? And then uh, when I do put it all together, I'll put it all together one night and I'll prepare it. And then in this case, I'm going to pour some wine on it. So you got to kind of let that dry for a night or so. It doesn't take much. And then, um, and that really marries it all together. Um, and then I will cast a circle. And I'll offer the entire thing up to him. I'll invoke him. And, and give him the offering and the, it'll billow up and I mean a lot it's like a cup I fill my thurible up with charcoal dump the whole thing on there billows up I I invoke him through song and poetry dance I mean I get my rumpled stilt skin on you know I'm alone so and the whole process just from beginning to end brings me closer and always in ways that are unexpected it's not, not like, like I don't do this a lot maybe once twice max a year um, but the whole process just brings me closer to them now if if you're at the stage in your path or journey where you're just decided you'd like to reach out to Kerninus for the first time, you can use this whole method as a pure invocation to what you're doing, to invoking the God and, and meeting him and becoming one and aligning yourself with the energy or awakening that energy within you. Um, so it can be done as a pure invocation or as an honoring and a giving thanks for all the stuff he's given me. Like, so, so much and doing this it, it, it can get very emotional you can like <laughs> it can get very emotional and very very deep very deep so uh, I'm gonna continue along I'll, I'm gonna I, I think the first tree over here is a U, so I'll go get that. <laughs> Bless me, witches. See you in a bit. <laughs> so this is the U tree. It's kind of hard to see there. But that's it. I'm going to just get a little bit of its bark. Just a little bit, not much. Oops. Here's a nice branch. <laughs> no, if you can see that. And that's you. That's what that's like. We'll put that. We'll put that in. Mwah. Mwah, I love you, you. So. I also wanted to remind you that when you're doing this, you always leave a little offering. No, I just take out some of my hair. 
and I just put it at the base and then just say thank you to the yew tree. <laughs> wow, here we are, we've climbed up here. This is the big red pine. It's gorgeous. Like I thought, there'll be no, um, no resin. I, I guess I'll look around. I'll take you around the bottom with me when I go. See, sometimes inside the little cracks and stuff, there'll be some resin, just little bits. Never very much. And there are some branches here. Yay, broken. I'll take this and burn these needles inside it. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Ah, it's exhilarating. <laughs> so this is the base of it. <laughs> I'm slipping. It's pretty cool. I think right in there, there it is. The wee little bit of resin we have found. See, get back in there. That's really old resin. So that's the only spot that I've found that actually has any resin. All of that is resin in there. So I'm gonna scrape some of that out. But besides that, Just a great big tree. All the way down. Down to the ground. And into where the resin is. So, here we go. Get in there and see what it's like. It's very old. It's really old. Oh wow. The older, it's almost always the better. Wow. I'm gonna put it in this little bag here today. You, you, can, you can see in here Oh, more red resin. <laughs> I guess there's more of it than I thought. I, I just always noticed, never really noticed it the same way. I don't know why. I'll leave my hair for it again. Can't cut yourself with this. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're here on this knoll. This is white pine. And you can see the big chunks of resin on this. I'm going to gather all this up. Just what I need for the... Um, just the amount that I need for the the resin for the god because I mean this ain't the only bit of it it's amazing amounts around here look at that I just had to show you that it's just so incredible that's picking up resin for the gods there's so much of it here I'm so glad I came up here I almost didn't because it's a long ways to go but I wanted that pine because it's the only one left. I had one on my property, but it fell over about 20 years ago. Blessed be, witches. It's gotten really dark coming home, so I mean, hopefully it won't rain. And we'll see you at the altar side. 
Oh, well, blessed be, witches. We made it to the altar side. Um, it did rain, but we're here. <laughs> so, um, where to start? Well, at first I wanted to talk a little bit about the process. Um, in this case, my normal process of wandering through the woods and gathering my incense and putting it together, it, it changed because this time I filmed it, right? So what I, what I did is I made that filming part of the process. And what I'm getting at here is that whenever you decide whatever your parameters are, it's like a pilgrimage. Once you decide your pilgrimage is to make it to this town and you, you get there this way and, and by doing that you fulfilled your pilgrimage, this is sort of like that. It's like once you decide what those parameters are and what you feel you need to do to collect a proper incense as a proper offering to either invoke the God or to honor the God. And you can most certainly use the same similar process to invoke the goddess. Like I'm doing this on behalf of the God because I, I want to honor the God specifically. Um, so I'm using all of this to, to do that. But you can do it in uh, whatever way you want to do it. But when you set your parameters, fulfill it. It's like when you set up a spell, that's what you do to fulfill that spell. It's the same thing. So, and, and you know, making that, bringing the filming into it, making that part of this, it, it made it very magical. I'm very surprised at how magical this whole process turned out for me. You know, the first day was a little lurky jerky, but then I, I settled into it and filming became more enjoyable. And by the third day, it was very magical. I got a lot out of this. So, putting this together. Well, first of all, we've got, um, this is the, um, the cedar, the fir and the hawthorn. I mean, the uh, hemlock. <laughs> that all got mixed in on the, the last part of the day when we gathered the cedar up. So those two days, they're all in here. So we're gonna start with that and we'll just put that in there. And that's what we first start grinding down. And you know, some of it's still a little kind of soft. That was some of the very soft stuff. Like that's what I, the stuff I called the God's blood and whatnot's in here. So that kind of clumps up and you know, and you got to really kind of like grind it down and really, really get at that. And it'll continue to do that. But over a period of time, it'll break up and kind of dry in with the other drier stuff. And when I do get it all mixed in, I kind of like sit here for a couple hours and go over the process, you know, kind of think of everything I've done and and grind all those thoughts and everything into it, much like when you're making a red powder. <laughs> Candles are talking. So, um, then further on that day, I found my, on the day of the cedar, I found the feather. So I'm going to put that in just tear it up and just every once in a while when you're giving this offering you'll smell that it smell kind of like dead <laughs> very gaudy very much the horn god so we'll put all that into it and it's what i found that day you know and if i find something that i don't want to put in it i don't pick it up everything i come home with goes into the incense I'm making to honor the God. It's part of that process again, right? And then the next day is the day of the um, the yew tree. So we'll put all that in. And that'll make it very green. You know, this is definitely something you, you're burning outside. If you burnt all of this inside, you kind of, you know, you'd, you'd asphyxiate yourself here. No, you don't want to do that. This is definitely 
built with the idea since I'm giving it all and what you know it's gonna be like a cop right you know or more you dump all that down onto it and burn that inside it wouldn't work anyways so you grind all that in and then what did we do then we the next day we went and we went up to the pine and we got that white pine that was the big chunks of it we had we found that day put that in there that up. and you gotta really grind especially with the with the soft it clumps up and then you put the U there green you know it really digs some grinder. And then what did we have? We had the red pine. Oh right, the red pine. And we didn't get much of that at all. You know, I scraped that out. Put that in there. There's that little red piece. And let's just grind it all up. And like I said a few minutes earlier, I would sit here for a few hours and go over the process and think about what I'm saying thank you for and all of that as I get ready. Yeah, the, the soft stuff in there, gooey stuff to make the big clumps. But you'd be amazed at how you grind up all those chunks of cedar, cedar bits and Grinds up. You get all that, and then you add a little bit of wine. Now, normally, I'm gonna burn a little bit of this with you tonight, but normally you kind of dry it out where this will be a little wet, right? But we'll just grind it up. Oh yeah, yeah. It makes with the grinding better too. It kind of really brings it together. It's amazing what it does to the smell. You'll notice it. You'll like, whoa, <laughs> what a great idea. I've also heard people putting honey in it. It's probably actually need just a little bit more wine. This is quite a big chunk in here. At least a cup, a cup and a half. So when you dump that all on the charcoal, that really billows up. Oh yeah. It's just big chunks in there. Okay, there I'll show you. This becomes this big red mass. Now I'll put it in here so you can see it better. Like that is, you can see, you know, there's bits and pieces of the cedar in there. Oops. Mmm. Oh, it's already. It's smelling great. <laughs> it's great. Okay, so a couple more charcoals in here. Get that nice and burning. So, like I say, normally I wanted to burn a little bit of this with you since we gathered it together, right? Normally I would. Uh, fill up with a whole bunch of these little round chips discs or what you get is you can buy charcoal that's made like from oak chips and stuff it's raw charcoal burns way better way longer and you can like get a nice little pile of it easier it's it's really nice way of doing it it's not that expensive either so say we 
you know you would imagine this would be a lot more right just see how that burns oh yeah it's wet <laughs> and there we go and it'll just burn oh oh it's sweet it smells like you wouldn't believe oh I wish I could communicate it so you can imagine if I had a lot of charcoals and I dumped the whole thing in it just billows up anyways so you know I'd burn this and like I say I do poetry and song and dance and I mean I wish I could take you into circle with me but it, it, that's <laughs> that's not happening and I would just you know I would speak his name into the night Kerninos Kern old one dark one i speak your name into the night pan buka i give thanks to him for all he's given anyways that's how you put it together. It's a very simple process. Just remember whenever you, what you make up to whatever the process will be, as in your parameters of your right, fulfill it. Let the spirits, let the gods, let yourself know that your word is powerful. And when you say you're gonna do it and you start the process, you fulfill that process. You finish that process. And the gods will take notice. The spirits will take notice. All will take notice. And things will be good. So I hope you got something from that. Um, it's been a wonderful process on my own for myself. It's like, it's been far more fulfilling than I thought it would be filming it and everything. It's very surprising. So, uh, howdy ho, witches. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yes. Mm. Howdy ho, witches.